Why paint? Because it keeps me thinking. Let's get started. So today we're painting a painting of cups in the sunlight. And there's the, wait a minute, that's not, oh yeah, that is the photo I'm working from, but I'm cropping in in my head. That apple on the left is not going to end up being in the painting at all, or hardly at all. That's because I'm working with a square. I like to work in a square. <laughs> it's kind of my, not a square I don't like. Um, but the first thing that I did there is just look at the lightest places and took some watered down Naples yellow and put those in so I don't drive over them. So they're just placeholders for the moment. Now I'm looking for some of the dark elements. And all I'm doing here is shapes. If you've seen me, my channel before or heard me talk before, I'm just looking at value shapes. That's what I paint. I paint value shapes and if I do it correctly, then when I pull back near the end of the painting, I'll actually have something that you can recognize as uh, recognizable. So, but I enjoy getting lost in the world of shapes. That's something I just really enjoy. And I like to look around the world and see that indeed everything is a shape. I like to think like a dog. You know, a dog, we, we have a puppy. We just got a puppy about two weeks ago. And one of the interesting things about it is it knows nothing. <laughs> it knows absolutely nothing. So if I'm to hold, let's say I hold up a, um, oh, I don't know. Let's say I was holding up a, a tea kettle, for example. Right now, she doesn't know if that's a toy or whether that's a thing that has a function or in something that she shouldn't go near. So everything has to be defined by her and everything has to be defined by shape. And one thing about dogs is if you've had dogs before, you know that they're, they're lovely and protective, but shapes change and they're not exactly sure when shapes change what to do with that. We've all seen a dog chase after a paper bag in the wind. And, you know, that's just a changing shape and it's moving. And when I have a collie dog, which I have right now, a collie puppy, she's just wired for that. And so she goes after it. You know, it's the greatest thing in the world. So I like to reduce my thinking to being that of a dog, just about shape, shape, color, and value. So shape meaning shape, that's obvious. Color, that's disputable. I, I define some colors here, reds and greens and oranges. But value, how light or dark is something compared to something else? And that's why there are all those value dabs on the upper left hand little sheet of paper there. I'm testing those dabs. And occasionally you'll see that red value finder come up. Sometimes I have to check and see if I've got something correct or not. Now, this has nothing to do with charts with little squares on them in, in terms of how light or dark a shape is. And look at all the value shape dabs I did. But what it has to do with once you start a painting, everything is just relative to everything else. So you can see that my Naples yellow, my placeholders are almost gone now. But in order to compensate for that, my dark shapes aren't nearly as dark as they need to be anymore. And I'm going to correct that in this second pass. I call this a second pass. The first part was about, oh, I don't know, 20 or 25 minutes. Then I went away for a day and then I came back. What attracted me to me, what attracted me to this particular subject is the colorfulness of it. And um, I was going to say, the yeah, just the, the shapes in the sun. That is appealing to me and made me kind of happy. I bought these cups and they're a lot of fun. But what was more interesting to me is how the shapes overlap with each other and how they interplay with each other. And I had a lot of fun thinking about how to use complementary colors. So there's, even though you see quite a bit of red or orange there, there's also in my greens quite a bit of red and orange as well. And the reason for that is that I want to have consistency in my painting. If I will use complements in my mixes, then I'm going to end up with a more cohesive painting at the very, very end. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm creating all of my own colors. Nothing is coming right from the tube. And the reason for this is because I'm not recreating what's on the photograph. I really want to create the feeling. I want to recreate the feeling of the sun coming in through the window panes there, which created some pretty unusual shapes and patterns. And you can decide whether you like that or don't like that. You know, perhaps it's too complicated or weird, but I kind of enjoy that. And that's kind of how I like to go through the world and see things is just, how does that relate to that? Look at the space between this thing and that thing. Look at the shape that gets created when those things are to get closer together. What is the shape of those things when those things get far apart? And I'm really even more interested in the shape of things that are in the 
uh, not the actual things, but the shape between things, the space that exists between things. I just find that fascinating. And that's kind of how I look at the world. I kind of look at the world as not just shapes, but all the energy and, and, and uh, relationships that are happening between things. We just read a book in my book group about how trees can actually talk to each other over ten, from over 10 miles. And it just, and prior to that, we read a book about um, elephants. And these were both nonfiction books. And it just reinforced again to me how much the natural world actually can talk to itself. You know, the, we know that the elephants use, can use the sound of their feet or thumps and, and, and things that we humans can't hear. But there's so much that's unexplained in the natural world that has to do with how the, the natural world relates to us. And I would like to stay plugged into that in some way because I just find it really fascinating. So that's my little, that's kind of where my head is these days. It's not really about painting as much as it is relationships and the space between things. So um, thanks for watching. Please join my YouTube channel. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, master value mix for color, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.